testing. Good morning.
rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to see you here this morning. Um, lots of folks who had weeks at camp last week. Um, we'll hear from our youth in just a little while. Um, I know I was at Glen Lake with a number of our kids and um, it was hot. Those of you who were in New Mexico, I am jealous. But we are all back to be together this morning. For those of you worshiping with us online, we are glad that you are with us. You are a part of this worshiping community, whether you're watching online um, live or if you were watching later in the week. And we are so glad that you are part of this community of faith. Um, I hope that you will check in with one another. Becky Bond is online with you. She waves to you um, and say hello. Let us know that you're there um, and be a part of that community that happens in that chat. I hope that you will take time to do that. Um, for everyone here in the sanctuary, I'm glad that you are here as well. Um, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I wanted to extend a special word of welcome. Um, you honor us with your presence, and um, we're glad that you are here. Uh, you will find um, on the back of your bulletin a place to register your attendance. You can fill that out. The tearing never bothers me in the middle of anything, so it's okay. Um, and please make sure you share your information. You can put that in the offering plate as it comes by a little bit later. On the other side, there's also a place to put your prayer requests. And so, um, and you get to decide how, how far you want those requests to go out. So um, I hope that you will take time for that. Oh, yeah, oh, wonderful. Cindy has added on here somewhere. Oh, at the very back, we're working on name tags because we've had some people really requesting them. Um, I know some people will never wear one. It's okay. But if you would like a laminated name tag um, on that registration attendance sheet, there's a place to check it. So please do that and we will be getting those um, as we go. So um, I think that's it for pre-worship announcements and welcome. But what I do invite you to do is just take a moment to pause, to take a deep breath in, to breathe in God's Holy Spirit that is closer to us than our very own breath, and to breathe out those things that keep us from centering our worship on our God this morning, all those things that try to distract us, Breathing in and breathing out. Gracious and loving God, it is so good to be here together to worship you, whether we are in the sanctuary or a part of our worshiping community beyond the sanctuary. God, we pray your blessings upon our worship this day. It is our desire to honor and praise you in everything that we do. Connect with us this day, God. We pray all of this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm going to invite you to stand with me and sing. As you can tell, we do have a smaller group today. So I invite you just to lean into, into, into prayer, into the quiet, to, to find God's peace in the midst of that. Stand with me for God of Wonder. creation of water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to
in the morning, I will celebrate the light, when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night, God of wonders, God of wonders beyond our Join me for our call to worship. We're getting there. People of God, tell it. We are not alone. We are children of God. People of Christ, tell it. The light has come in love and truth teaching us to live in the light. People of the Spirit, tell it. The Spirit of truth reveals hidden things, offering healing through honest confession. People of God, tell it. We are not alone. We are children of God. I invite you to sing our next song with us, How Great Thou Art. <laughs> oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down, from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee Sparing, send him to 
to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! Is it on? Hi. All right. The first scripture today comes from Genesis chapter 21, verses 17 through 21. God heard the boy's cries, and God's messenger called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, Hagar, what's wrong? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy's cries over there. Get up, pick up the boy, and take him by the hand, because I will make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well. She went over, filled the water flask, and gave the boy a drink. God remained with the boy. He grew up, lived in the desert, and became an expert archer. He lived in the Paran Desert, and his mother found him an Egyptian wife. The second reading today is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. Disciples aren't greater than their teacher, and slaves aren't greater than their master. It's enough for disciples to be like their teacher and slaves like their master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, it's certain they will call the members of his household by even worse names. Therefore, don't be afraid of those people because nothing is hidden that won't be revealed and nothing secret that won't be brought out into the open. What I say to you in the darkness, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, announce from the rooftops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't kill the soul. Instead, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin? But not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before people will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But everyone who denies me before people, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Don't think I've come to bring peace to the earth. I haven't come to bring peace but a sword. I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. People's enemies are members of their own households. Those who love father or mother more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who love son or daughter more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who don't pick up their crosses and follow me aren't worthy of me. Those who find their lives will lose them, and those who lose their lives because of me will find them. 
the word of God for the people of God. Amen. For our offertory time, I invite our youth up, and I believe somebody is sharing, Wyatt is sharing um, about camp this week. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Wyatt. I'm part of the youth here. Um, and this last week, we had the opportunity to go out to um, Glorieta, New Mexico, um, and spend a week there at a Generate camp. Um, and this is a really special opportunity for our youth that we get every year. Um, because what is, is essentially is just a chance for all of us to step away from our lives, our jobs, our friends, anything that could be distracting us. And we really just get a chance to address ourselves and build our relationships both with each other and the Lord. Thank you. Thanks, Wyatt. And um, this happens, I invite our ushers forward, this happens, um, our youth pay part of their way to Gloria to camp, but it's also because of your support. Um, I don't know about you, I would, like I said before, I was at Glen Lake this past week with some of our younger children, and that moment to just get away. Did you leave your phones at home? packed away at least <laughs> they didn't leave them but they left them packed away and they they just got out in nature and did things and how amazing is that we all need those moments right to just step away and you as a congregation have helped to provide that for our youth for our children um, in these sacred holy spaces where they're able to grow in their faith and so for that I give you thanks and as we give our tithes and offerings this day we give um, for that reason to help people grow in their faith in their discipleship of Jesus Christ and so as we give let us give generously will you pray with me gracious and loving God we thank you for opportunities to get away so that we may hear you more clearly so that we may connect with you and with others in such special ways and so God we pray your blessings upon these tithes and offerings as you transform them into mission and ministry within these walls and beyond these walls. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. with me for the doxology. Praise God. the children forward.
Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to see everybody back from camp. If you went to Glen Lake, give me a thumbs up if you had a great time. And if you would maybe go back next year. Okay. That's a good sign, right? That's awesome. I'm so glad you guys had fun. I know camp sometimes is kind of a hard thing to leave your family, and I know it's hard for us parents to leave, let our kids go, but it's so rewarding and a special time to get together and learn about Christ and God. So today, we're going to talk about our roots. Now, do you guys have roots? You don't really like have like actual roots, like a tree. Think of a tree how a tree starts out, right? And then it grows. Do you know that we have to be rooted in who? God. All good things come if we're rooted in Christ. So as Christians, it's so important to love or to have strong roots in Jesus Christ. If we're going to live out our purpose as followers of Christ, we can't live the Christian life God has for us without being rooted in Christ. Now, what am I talking about when I say rooted in Christ? We talked about a tree having roots. So there's little trees, big trees, some trees. Have you ever been able to even hug around a whole tree? Some of the trunks are so big, you can't even hug the whole thing. Some of them are hundreds years old. Some of them are small. Just like a tree, we're called to grow and produce fruit as Christians for God's glory. How can we be rooted? There's five ways, okay? So, give your whole life to Christ. How can we do that? We can say, we talked about it a few weeks ago. Go to church. We said, let go and let God. He can control our life because he's already going to do it anyway. So, we might as well sit back and let and let him. Don't cheat. <laughs> yes, number two, two is read God's word. What is God's word? What's another word for the word? What's that? No, what's that word that we call? It starts with a B. God's word is the Bible. Bible, The B-I-B-L-E, right? The B-I-B-L-E. The Bible. The next thing is we're going to spend time with God in prayer and worship. Are you spending time with God today? Mm -hmm. Have we already prayed? We've prayed a few times, right? We prayed in Sunday school. We've prayed a few times in church. Also, we're worshiping. That's one of my favorite ways to be rooted in Christ, is to worship, to sing to him. The next one is to surround yourself with the right people. And I think we are surrounded by the right people here up on this stage and also in that congregation. Did you know all of these people love you in Christ? No matter what, we love each other. We're bringing up each other in Christ. The last one is humble yourself before God. This is another time to let go and let God be in your life. And we can talk to God, we can pray to him anytime, anywhere, read the Bible, surround yourself with other Christians. That way we can keep our roots in our Christianity and in God, right? Can you think of another way that you can keep your roots and be a Christian? What's another way? Anybody? How about shining your light for God? bringing other people. Should we be ashamed or scared to tell other people about God? No. We should be yelling it from the rooftops or the mountaintops, right? We should never be ashamed to tell everybody about God and how much God loves everybody, right? So I want you to think about that this week as you go into the world, whatever you're doing this week. Maybe you're going to another camp. Maybe you're going to a sport. Maybe you're going to the water park. Think about how you can shine your light for Christ, okay? Are you ready to pray? Yeah! Good morning, God. We thank you so much for this time together. God, we pray that we can go out this week and we can be rooted in you. We can be in the light, shine our light, and tell others about you and all of the wonderful things you do. Thank you for loving us, and we love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious and loving God, we come before you to praise, to worship you, for you are God and there is none other. God, you are the God of history from before we were able to even count time, you have been here. You have been here through, through our stories that we hear over and over again in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, the stories of our roots in you. For this, God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for so much in our world. It's very easy to get down on things and get cynical. God, you know this of many of us. And yet, when we look around, we are amazed at how you are at work in the lives of people. How you are at work in our lives. And God, we, we ask, we we ask that you help use us in that. We want to be your partners. We ask for you to show us the way. We ask you to help us speak it in the light and to proclaim it from the rooftops. But God, there are those times when we are unable to do that. When our fear overtakes what we know you are calling us to do. When our worries overwhelm us. When the world weighs us down. And God, not only do we seek your help in overcoming, but we ask your forgiveness for those times when we let that be our excuse for not living in the light, for not following your call. God, in this moment, we pray for those within our community of faith who are struggling in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those who are home-centered, who are limited in their abilities to come to church and be out in the world, God. We, we lift them to you. God, we hold Cesar Seely, up to you, our, our regular pianist, as he mourns along with his family the death of his nephew in Colombia. We pray for all who are suffering from loss in whatever form it may be. God, you call us into this world. And we know that you do not call us and leave us alone. We know, God, that you go with us, that you surround us, that you strengthen us. Even in those incredibly hard places, help us to feel that. And trust that and know that. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During this time, the altar is open for prayer. it out and some days we return to some of those songs foundational to our faith it's just fun will you pray with me gracious and loving God we long to hear your word this day we pray that you will speak through these words and in spite of them for you you, God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So when I was a child, 
we would often be in the living room of our house and my mom would say, go get such and such. For some reason, I always felt like it was like the sewing scissors or something. Go get this from my room. And of course, her room was at the end of a very long hall that was dark and the lights were off in her bedroom, right? And, and the windows kind of were behind her bed. She had a long, my parents had a long row of windows and there were bushes. So they cast great shadows on the wall and they, they hit the screens and made sounds. And, and I was sure that there was something terrible in there that was going to get me. And it was just waiting for its chance. And so I had to run in as fast as I could and run back out, right? I had two ways of handling this. Sometimes, like I said, I'd run in super fast, grab things, and run back out relieved and thankful that once again I was faster than the something terrible and I made it without it getting me. Other times I would pretend that I'm so much braver than I really was and I would head into her bedroom and, and I was determined I was just going to walk and be brave and for some reason I could do that if I was talking or singing, sure of one of two things. Either it would get my mind off of being scared, or the something terrible couldn't hurt me if I was singing. Isn't it funny what our childhood brains do and go through? And I think back now about that long journey down that hall. Y'all, we lived in a two-bedroom house. It was not very big at all. The, the hall was shorter than one of these pews, but it was, it was scary. And I think also, why didn't I just turn on the light? Right? It would have just taken a flip of a switch. We all have fears. They're either real or imagined. Some are small. Some are very large. Some that start small and continue to grow in our thoughts and in our hearts until they are so large that, that we feel like we can't even talk about it or, or don't know how to talk about it. And I'm sure it was these kinds of fears were growing in Hagar as we heard just a snippet of her story today. You'll remember that Hagar was Sarah's servant, her slave. And when the years went by and Sarah was still unable to have this baby that God had promised her, they took matters into her own hands and she took it and offered Sarah to Abraham. And, and that was often the custom. And Hagar bore a son, and Ishmael was his name. Well, later on, after Sarah did have Isaac, the child God had promised her, Sarah's thoughts grew darker and darker, and those fears grew bigger and bigger. And when Sarah saw Isaac and Ishmael playing together, she got to thinking about how Ishmael was technically the firstborn son of Abraham, and this child of a slave woman would inherit most of all Abraham had, ahead of their second son, Isaac. Now, to his credit, Abraham, too, was distressed about this, but God assured him that Abraham would be, that Ishmael would be taken care of. In fact, Ishmael, through Ishmael, a whole nation would come because he was Abraham's son. And yet this slave woman was treated so terribly. Hagar and Ishmael were, were taken out into the desert with just a little skin of water. And, and when that water ran out, Hagar placed her son under a bush and went away and cried out to God that she could not watch the death of her son. And God heard the boy's cry and spoke to Hagar. God spoke to the slave that was dismissed by everyone else. Do not be afraid. I have heard the boy's cry. Go and get him and hold him. I have great plans for him. When she opened her eyes, she saw a well. 
And God took care of her despite what the humans did. And Ishmael's offspring did become a great nation. As well as Abraham's line through Isaac. Do not fear, God said. Do not be afraid. In the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, do not be afraid appears 80 times. In the Common English, it appears 113 times. Because of the way it gets translated, it's kind of hard to hone in on just an exact number. But you get the picture. It's a common theme throughout so many stories of our faith. Every time a messenger of God shows up, those are the first words. Do not be afraid. As Jesus continues to prepare his disciples in the Gospel of Matthew, he shares some pretty hard things. He's very forthcoming that they are going to face challenges. If they, those people out there, have said that the teacher or the master of the house is an evil one, how much more are they going to say that about his followers? And I'll be honest, I initially was going to cut the last several verses of today's lectionary text and end at verse 31 about being more important than the sparrows. End it with this very reassuring verse and not dive into the hard stuff. But as I sat with it, I knew that we couldn't just stop with the soft and reassuring we had to hear what we might be afraid of because this discipleship thing isn't just soft and fuzzy all the time sometimes we're faced with hard choices and we get pretty uncomfortable when we think about the warm fuzzy jesus who heals people and welcomes children saying don't not, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. That's not the Jesus we want to hear about. And he goes into the speech about, about choosing Jesus over our family members and, and how divisive that can be. And I don't know about you, but I want to say, hey, Jesus, this is not the way to sell it, right? But you know what? You know what I appreciate about Jesus here? He's not about keeping secrets. He's telling us from the beginning that there is a cost to discipleship. Makes even more sense when we realize that Matthew is writing to the early Christian community that is facing persecution on a daily basis. That's when the scripture was read and the lens through which it was written. Being a disciple of Jesus is hard work, and sometimes, you know what, it even divides families. I've been thinking about how divisive our country is right now and has been for a number of years. I'm also reminded how I have had conversations with a number of people about how they believe differently than some of their family members, and they've had to make either one or two choices either just to agree not to speak of these things that divide, or in the case of several people I know, they've had to make the very hard, very real decision to not spend time with their family because they can't stand to hear the spewing of such hatred. I do not believe that Jesus is saying that our families don't matter. And that we're to turn away from them. That's not what Jesus is saying here. But I do think that Jesus is naming a very hard reality for some in our world that sometimes we do have to make the hard choices. Sometimes we have to make a brave decision to turn away. And sometimes that's turning away from our families. Families where, where poor choices have been made for generation after generation and, and God is calling us to break a cycle. Families where the toxicity is so great that for our own sanity and self-care we have to do something different. 
families where we have been harmed and we need to find a safe place. We can talk about the forgiveness piece. That's a whole different sermon. But what I hear Jesus saying here is that, yes, sometimes me, following me, sometimes following me and my ways, feeding those who are hungry, offering healing to those who are hurting, water to those who are thirsty, clothing to those who have none, going into the prisons and the uncomfortable places to share God's love, standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves, speaking up. And turning on the light to injustice. Stepping out of our warm, fuzzy comfort zone and doing the hard, right thing. Jesus says, yeah, sometimes you have to do these hard things if you're going to follow me. And yet, he says, have no fear. Do not be afraid. Do you see how God notices the sparrows, those birds that aren't worth very much at all? Do not be afraid. You are of more value than those sparrows. And God has even counted every hair on your head. Or the hair that used to be there, whoever you are. I have come to love this book, Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints, partly because I love the title. It's by Deneen Akers, and in it she highlights 36 people of varying experiences from different centuries, different religions, and she tells their stories, stories of bravery, stories of, of conviction, one of the first people she highlights is a person from history, Anne Hutchinson. On November 7th, 1637, Anne stood trial in the Massachusetts Bay Colony for speaking her mind about her religious convictions. She was accused of upsetting gender roles and troubling the peace, all because she started a weekly gathering in her home for women to talk, pray, and discuss this week's sermon. The problem is that soon they brought their husbands, and Anne was preaching to about 80 people in her home every week. She was preaching a gospel of grace, a gospel of love, as opposed to the ones that were being preached from the pulpit where salvation required doing good deeds. You had to earn your salvation. As she got up that morning before she went to trial, she writes, I must not fear or be dismayed. He who is unseen is yet with me. So during the trial, Anne is holding her own without a lawyer. She's facing 49 men, including many ministers and leaders of the colony, in fact, she was the first female defendant in a Massachusetts court. And the men tried to argue that she had gone well beyond what the Bible allowed women. But what upset the men the most was her firm belief that God had spoken directly to her through the Holy Spirit. They couldn't tolerate an idea of God speaking directly to a woman, and they thought that it was a very dangerous example so after a two-day trial, Anne was banished from her colony where she lived as a heretic. She and her husband and her children, along with dozens of her followers who either chose or were forced into exile along with her, ended up in the Rhode Island colony, which was governed by Roger Williams, a man who, who believed that religious freedom and Anne's influence can be seen in the religious liberty that became enshrined into the laws of that colony and later on setting the stage for religious freedom in our country. In 1987, the Massachusetts governor pardoned Anne Hutchinson and revoked the 350-year banishment order. But here's the thing about Anne. She always remained steadfast. 
in her beliefs and conviction that God was leading her. And she writes, Now having seen him which is invisible, I fear not what man can do to me, she said. This woman who lost her home, this woman who had been put on trial, this woman who had been through any number of hard things simply because she professed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our world is full of these stories. In fact, some of the places in our world where Christianity is growing the fastest is those places where it is illegal still and persecutions are happening. Sometimes I think that, that we who live in a country where Christianity is legal and somewhat the norm, though a little bit less now than it probably was in the past, but, but we forget the risk and we become complacent. But have you ever had that gut nudge from the Holy Spirit to speak up when maybe you were afraid? Have you ever had one of those moments when, when you had to speak the truth of Jesus because you just couldn't stay quiet? One of my favorite quotes is by Maggie Kuhn, speak the truth even if your voice shakes. Jesus says, what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Jesus has invited us into this discipleship journey. He also hasn't sugarcoated it for us. And yet our God knows the numbers of hairs on our head. This God who, who not just sees but grows this great nation out of a slave mother and son who have been dismissed and left in the desert. The God who sees and knows our struggles. This God will not abandon us. Do not be afraid. God is on our side, not in a I'm right and you're wrong kind of way. God is on our side in a there is nothing that we cannot do for the kingdom if we try kind of way. God is on our side in a life is deeper and richer and more satisfying despite the risks kind of way. So let us tell it in the light. Let us proclaim it from the rooftops that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior and calls us to love God and to love one another. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. We are, n oh, sorry, stand up. <laughs> I forget that part. All right, ready? All right, here we go. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. If you are looking for a church home, you know what? We don't have it all figured out. But we're trying to be the most faithful disciples we can be. And we do that together. 
And we invite you and would love for you to be a part of this community of faith. We receive new members by transfer from another denomination, from another United Methodist Church, or by profession of faith in Jesus Christ for the first time. If this is you today. You can come down during this closing hymn, um, closing song, and meet me down front. Um, I'd love to introduce you to the congregation. I know some are really, really nervous about being down front, and so you can just talk to me in the back if you need to, um, or give me a call anytime during the week, and I'd love to have that conversation and answer any questions you might have. And now, I'm always bad about this transition. We're going to move into a song called Egypt. Yes. Lovely. I invite you to sing with us at this time. I won't forget. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought to deliver Summer is not a time to slow down around here. 
and I've left my notes, so I'm going by the slides. Here we go. Celts Walking Group is walking on Mondays and Thursdays um, in the gym if you're looking for a cool place to walk. It's also a great invitational piece if you um, have someone you want to invite. Um, easy. On June 28th, which is Wednesday, I believe, um, we'll have a, our final conversation about the turquoise table here at the church. Um, that will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, dates for Peach Festival Ice Cream Boot Camp starts this week. So we are so thankful for those who sign up for that 5 a.m. slot. Um, I'll be there a little bit later tomorrow, I promise. Um, but we'll be making 20, 250 gallons of ice cream this week and getting it frozen for Peach Festival. Um, we've got a, bl I'm sorry. Oh, Do uh, Dottie is the person to see. Dottie, what do you need to say? So, yes, we're so thankful that we're coordinating that. Um, so you don't have to walk so far in the heat to serve um, during Peach Festival. Save the date. In August, we'll have a blood drive. Um, and Missy Buchanan, you don't want to miss signing up for this, um, especially if you're in the 60-plus group. But my guess is she has a, got stuff for any age, too. Um, but Dawn Phillips, raise your hand. Um, you can sign up online. You can talk with Dawn if you have any questions. And I believe there's a lunch tomorrow at Beef Masters for our 60-plus bunch or 60-ish plus bunch. July 3rd. Sorry, next week. I'm a week off. Um, July 3rd. So you got a week for that, but some RSVP for that so that you can do that. Um, our youth, I think, do you all have stuff Wednesday night? from three to six, so um, busy, busy. Our God does not leave us alone. Our God calls us into this world and equips us to go even into the scary places. And so this week I challenge you. I challenge you to pay attention if you're being called to speak or to do something in the place that causes you just a little bit of fear, to say a prayer and jump right in. Will you receive this benediction? Go forth from this place to teach as you have been taught, to serve as you have been served, and to love as you have been loved as a beloved child of God. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Amen. Cause you stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Cause you stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand. of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Cause you're the God who fights for me. Oh, 
Maybe not. Maybe. 